Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'll be looking at Warzone Octarius Critical Mass, giving you my first impressions of the book. Now, I will be focusing on match play. I don't really look at the narrative of or open play stuff or the sort of campaign mechanics of it. Looking at my summary here that sort of takes the elements of this book and just gives them a quick point overview of what I think of them, we have the index. Astra Cartographica, I believe is the way to pronounce it, Codex Supplement, Orc Blood Axe, and Army of Renown Speed Freak Speed Mob. So starting with the Astra Cartographica, this is so part of the Agents of the Imperium, which is actually part of their rule. And honestly, I think it's really annoying that we're getting these spread out between different books. This should all be in one book. You know, you should have your your inquisitors, you should have your rogue traders here, you should have your assassins, all in one book. And believe it or not, in 7th edition, there was one such book, and it was good. It's called, I think, Agents of the Imperium, and it included Death Watch as well, because they didn't have a codex then, I think, as well, maybe some few other things. Point being is that maybe there should just be a book dedicated to the sort of Agents of Imperium, ones that can go into Imperium armies and help them out, that would be really useful, just keep them in one place. So I've given them a low score for that one, plus I don't really see many people using the rule traders, but gives them rules and that's okay I guess. Codex Supplement Orc Blood Axes, I gave it a 3 out of 10, it's 3 pages long. Additional rules for Blood Axes and these come with the 3 Warlord Traits, 3 Relics and 8 Stratagems. So ultimately I give this a bit low because I don't like how these supplements are, you know, you're only getting one supplement per, per, per force. And we saw with like the Cult of Strife for Druk uh, Drukari, there was a bit of favouritism with the rules spread over, uh, which made them a little bit more better than the other cults because they have far more resources. If you're going to do supplements, I believe that you should really be more down the Chaos Space Marine route, which is each of their so forces got an even amount of supplements and different play styles and it worked really really well from iron warriors to night lords don't it? Uh, the night lords think was okay but iron warriors one was really good when you just do one it doesn't work out well and the other thing i didn't like which is not the case in this one is adeptus mechanicus had i believe their supplement in one book and then their regiment renown in another that is not the case here so i'm a little bit happier with that that they are keeping the supplement and the regiment renown in one book for orcs and for all intents and purposes this is kind of an orc book we also have the army of renown speed freak speed mob and i gave that a 7 out of 10 which is quite a high one uh, it's only three pages long and the adrenaline junkies kind of fixes evil sun's culture rule in a way i know that was a big sort of a big problem just with the way the daca rule worked um if it ain't Speed Freak, Wagon or Aircraft, you're not using it in this force. And it does have two vehicle custom jobs, one Warlord trait and six stratagems. And lastly, I will look at the looted vehicles, but you're not getting them in match play. So ultimately, how I feel with this one. I'm not happy with this book, because I've, I've said that for a while now. I think we, if we're going to do them this way, maybe you should just have narrative books, which is designed for narrative and open play. And then maybe match should just be concentrated on matched play. Uh, maybe some people might disagree with that approach but ultimately when it comes to these supplements and things I prefer to go down the Chaos Space Marine route on how they sort of handled expanding their forces but maybe I'll do that in my summary later either way this is sort of my TLDR of the, the rules you get in this now I'm going to go into them in a little bit further detail starting off with the Index Astro Cartographer uh, now, I'm not really going to write much about this one. In my other ones, you will see I've write, wrote rather than just put pictures of the rules. The uh, reason I put pictures of the rules is that there's not much to say in this one. Simply put that if you're playing Imperium Force and you fancy having these guys go for it, but I don't think they're going to add much, if anything, to your force. If anything, it might just be using up resources, which is not ideal. But it gives you a different way to play. There might be something I'm missing that you go, wow, this really adds something to Imperium forces. Now, the only thing I would say is that they don't hinder you either because you still get your Legion traits, etc. But I do think that overall, they're not adding much to the force. I would say that I'm going to basically double down on my position that I think when it comes to these agents in Imperium, it's nice to have them. And certainly in the Assassin's case, they are actually quite useful. And sometimes Inquisitors as well. Rogue Traders seems to be, well, we've got that box set and we don't quite know how to pursue these into further uses in the game. Maybe they're quite good for narrative. You know, you could use them for restocking supplies or something. I don't know. But I do think that it would have been a much better idea to have all these, you know, 
supplementary characters and units for Imperium forces in one book. How they did it in the Agents of Imperium was very good. I've still actually got that book somewhere, uh, along with the Legions of Chaos one as well, which was awesome as well. Those were two real good books that came out at the end of Synth Edition. I think they need to maybe think about, if they ever do this again, get all these agents and everything into one book. It'd be very helpful. Either way, I think we're probably going to see an Assassin's version of this come out in one of these future books. I wouldn't be surprised if it's probably the next one. We will have the Assassin side of it because we've had Inquisitors. We've now had these Rogue Traders and it will probably be Assassins down the line next. Looking at the Blood Axes supplements, we have their Warlord traits, which is extra cunning, once per battle round. When you use Strategic Ploy Stratum, if your Warlord is on the battlefield, reduce the cost by one. No future uses are a normal amount. I assume they mean per battle rounds, because it's a once per battle, ma battle round use, so if future uses, then obviously if it's a different battle round, it should keep reducing uh, one time, but if you use it again in that that same battle round as the normal cost. Either way, I think that could be good. There's a few interesting strategic ploy stratagems. I think it's not bad. If you are going to plan to use them, so in, for instance, like the Gretchen Shield all the time, yeah, that might be quite useful. Counter Tactics, which is an aura friendly Blood Axe core units within 6 inches of this warlord can heroically intervene. Could be quite useful just to guarantee your orcs just keep on moving, which is quite nice. Then we have Duck and Kova at the start of your opponent's Shun phase. If this warlord is wholly with uh, in an area terrain feature, select one friendly Blood Axe Boys or Blood Axe Commandos unit wholly within the terrain feature. Until the end of the phase, that unit cannot be targeted unless the unit is within 12 inches of the terrain feature. I can see uses for that one. Obviously, mitigating your opponent being able to fire is very, very useful. But ultimately, when it comes to your boys and your commandos, they're probably going to be a little bit more forward field. If your opponent wants to target them, them, they could probably just get within the 12 inches part. But equally, if your opponent doesn't manage to take them out, then it could be quite uh, damaging for them if then the boys come out of the train and begin to chop them apart. So I can see uses for that one. We also have the Relics, which is straight shooter, replace custom shooter. Range 24 inches, DACA 1410, strength 5, AP minus 1, 1 damage, ignores lookout, sir, and any unmodified wound roll of 6 also inflicts a mortal wound on top of normal damage. I think this one could be quite useful. I would need to do a bit more of the math on this one. But a 1410 attack, now obviously you're going to be hitting on quite low results. So you might only get between 2, 3, maybe on the higher 14 one, possibly 4. Now I don't think the math works out on that one. I think it's usually looking at about 2 or 3 hits. And then you might, you're ignoring lookout, so you might get a few sixes to wound, one, two, if you're lucky, and then an extra wound on top of it. So you're looking at maybe possibly two, three wounds if you're lucky on an opponent. And, but that ignoring lookout, sir, could be useful. And it's a lot of DAC on that. So, interesting side of that one. Obviously, if they were more accurate, this would be a phenomenal weapon. But uh, we, we are looking at orcs, and accuracy is not their thing. We have Fight Detector. At the end of the opponent's reinforcement step, if an enemy sets up, uh, with, within 12 inches from the, the bearer, select one Blood Axe core unit from your army, not in engagement range of an enemy, and 6 inches of the bearer. That unit can charge at the enemy with plus 2. Now that's going to be a very nice relic to have. Being able to, as soon as your opponent sort of comes in the reinforcement and you bound at them, uh, they're probably going to deploy 9 inches away from you, but you're going to basically get a 7 inch charge. That could be deadly. That could be very, very nice. I'm intrigued. I don't think many people... There might, there's a few people who obviously want to charge orcs to try and bring them down, get the drop on them. But this could give you the drop on them and could be quite nice. Something for your opponent to really think about if maybe part of the strategy is to get the drop on you and you take them out first. Obviously you'd fight first in the, the fight phase because you made the charge. It could really stifle their plans. So interesting one, that one. I really like it. Noise box, which is an aura, 6 inch, enemy suffers minus 1 leadership, or minus 3 if the bearer has slain a character, also with minus 1 combat attrition. Bit of a leadership uh, bomb in that one. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'm not a big fan of leadership bombs in general, especially in the past, two, uh, the past edition in this one. So if I'd say anything, flight detector is the, fight detector is the one that is most intriguing. On some of the stratagems, we have Young Bloods, which is 1 slash 2 command points. Using the fight phase when Storm Boys select to fight, add 1 to strength to the models. If they're 10 or less, it's 1 CP, otherwise it's 2. Uh, it's going to be situational. Having plus 1 strength is not bad, it just depends what you're fighting. If you find anything that's tough as 4, it's going to be useful. Anything uh, that is 
I don't know, it depends on the uh, weapons that you're using on that one. It really just depends whether you need to get that extra, either to go from being too low strength to being even, or being even to too good. It can make a difference. Got them trapped, which is two command points. Use at the start of the fight phase. Select an enemy unit with an engagement range of two or more Blood Axe units, excluding captures. Blood Axe units that hit on our unmodified hit roll of six score an additional hit. Uh, again, if you've got way of dice in this one, it's going to pay off a lot more. The fact that it affects two or more Blood Axe units, so if you've got loads of boys, it's going to make a bit of a difference in that one. Maybe when we played more Horde units, that would have been nice. I think now that uh, Horde is less essential, then we're not going to see this one pay off as much. But it's still not bad. Is it worth two command points? It depends on the size of your units. Trigger Discipline, which is one command point slash two command points. Used in the shooting phase when looters shoot, select an enemy vehicle and selected looter unit can reroll hits against that vehicle. Ten for your models, one command point. Otherwise, two command points. Uh, yeah, I think that one's okay when, you know, you're, when you're wanting to buff up your looters. If you just want to get a lot more accuracy, yeah, you're going to get a lot of rerolls in this one. So, just depends on the amount of firepower you're putting out with them. If it's looking good and you want to get maximise your amount of hits, this could be an easy one to use. Surprise, which is one command point, use it at the start of the fight phase. Select a commandos unit wholly within an area terrain feature until the end of the phase. Enemy units with an engagement range of the unit never make use of rules to fight first and never count as having charged. Also, minus one tip when targeting the commandos. Very good defensive ability for commandos. Your opponent thinks they're getting you know, an easy run at you just trying to charge them, take them out. This will make it a little bit more difficult for them because then they'll have to, when it comes to activation, they'll probably have to activate them first. If it comes down to your opponent's made mass amount of charges, I believe that when it comes down to the change in this edition, that when it's protracted combats, the opponent chooses now. So technically your commandos should actually be able to attack first. Correct me if I'm wrong in that one. And then the minus one uh, tilt on them is quite good. So if you've got commandos, I hear they're quite good to forward position and set on objectives. Yeah. I could see us from getting some good use. And then lastly, Glory Boys, which is one command point. Using your charge phase when a Blood Axe unit makes a charge, select one enemy unit that was the target of that charge. Each time a Storm Boys unit charges at elected unit, add two to the charge roll. For one command point, that could be a steal. If you've got loads of Storm Boys, and I believe that they're quite okay, they're a few points extra than average boys, but you're against such an increase in movement that it does make them quite tempting. Adding plus two to charge roll for all your storm boys that do elect to charge this unit really just means that if there's a unit you want shut down and you've got a few units of, say, multiple small unit of storm boys, just elect for them to charge in and get an extra two, one will get in, if not more. So very, very handy there as well. Last the supplements for the blood axes, we've got spotted them, which is one command point. Use at the start of the shooting phase, select one enemy unit within 12 inches of and visible to blood axe commando unit. Until the end of the phase, each time Blood Axe model makes an attack against that unit, they do not benefit from cover. Uh, I think that one's okay. Uh, it's using your commandos to solve spot units. The thing is, the orcs, the ranged is not their greatest asset, but there might be a unit you just want to try and bring down, and you do have plenty of DACA for them, so if you do have it inclined, then yeah, sure, I can see it being useful. It is, after all, only one command point. Tactical awareness, or tactical, I mean, when it comes to orc pronunciation stuff, don't judge me. Two command points. Use at the start of any phase. Select one blood axe unit and until the end of the turn that unit can start to perform an action even if it advanced this turn. Can make a range attack without action failing. If it's a catcher you can still use aura abilities. It has while performing an action. Uh, two, two command points. Quite good. Uh, when you can perform your role and do an action it can be quite useful. Certainly if you need to get onto an objective and say raise banners or anything like that. The fact that I don't think the range attack one is so important, but certainly being able to advance and do the action is very important. I didn't realise that if you advance you couldn't perform an action, but I now realise that's probably, that sounds about right, you probably can't advance. So this just makes it very, very useful. Special ammunition, one to two command points. Using your shooting phase when a blood axe unit is selected to shoot until the end of the phase. Shooters in that, that unit are DACA 4-2 and AP-1, including combi weapons. If 10 or fewer models, it costs one command point. Otherwise, it is two command points. Well, as far as I know, that most people are saying that shooters are just not worth it anymore. You're better off just going a horde load of boys with choppers. And I think if DACA, you know, if shooters were more inclined with this DACA row of 4-2 an AP-1, then yeah, we might actually see more use for shooters getting up close, and if you even had 
10 man squad or 15 man squad each putting out four shots piece not bad but they're so inaccurate i'm still inclined because that's going to use up command points to kind of justify them to just go with sluggers and choppers because you're going to hit more accurately and just generally do a lot more damage with orcs in combat so I don't know. I think they must have Games Workshop must have realised that you know, you know, shooters are just not as effective as we maybe wanted them to be, or even close to match the slugger chopper combo. And this has meant them trying to fix it. But when it's just on blood axes, it should really be an option for all the orcs, in my opinion. On to the Speed Freak Speed Mob Regiment Renown. The first thing are the restrictions, which is basically all units must be Speed Freaks, wagon, or aircraft, which should surprise no one really. I've then got a list of units that I believe that are all usable. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but I'm not going to pronounce them all because I'm probably going to make some mistakes there in terms of pronunciation. The benefits, all units gain speed mob keywords, two times vehicle custom jobs, one warlord trait, four stratagems, and if you're in an outrider detachment, your warlord's in that detachment, then it's plus three command points. This is obviously because you're more inclined to go with an outrider detachment with speed freaks. Speed freaks gain adrenaline junkies, speed free bikers gain obsec. Adrenaline Junkies, so units do not gain the culture that they're currently got, but does not prevent other units from benefiting from it. So your Speed Freaks are mainly going to be your bikes, etc. But, uh, and then your, I think your buggies and your, your Death Killer Wartrike. But they all gain plus one attack on the charge and can heroically intervene. Advancing allows you to shoot as if you moved normally. You also get a six up invo, and when advancing, a five up invo. So it's interesting that one, that I think this is in a large way trying to fix what Evil Sons kind of got wrong. In terms of, I think with the Evil Sons, you could advance and still fire normally, I think was the culture rule for them uh, sorry you could advance and fire your assault weapons normally but the problem with a lot of the orc side is that they don't have very many assault weapons they've mainly got daca weapons so this kind of fix that fixes that one in a way for the bikers also you only really get with the evil sons one inch movement or if you're speed freak you get two inch movement in this case it's replacing the two inch movement with plus one attack which one's more useful? You're already moving stupidly fast with these units. That losing the extra two inches for an attack may be probably a better option along with the heroic, in heroic intervention. And then a six up invo and then five up invo is not bad either. If there was a way to advance and charge, and maybe there is and I've just missed it with orcs, then this will be stupidly good because five up invo when you're advancing charging, loads of board movement and the five up invo and charge would be ridiculous. Now, if there's a way to do that, oh boy, orcs are in for a fun time, but already we see a lot of problems with speed freak armies that they're doing really, really well in terms of orcs in some some areas. So, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty glad that there's, as far as I can see, no way that you can advance and charge, or at least army-wide. Either way, I like these. I think that is a bit of a response to the evil sun sort of culture, and this does do, do a lot of way to make it slightly better. On to some of the upgrades you can get for Speed Freaks. We've got the Vehicle Custom Jobs, Drag change, Chains, which is Speed me speed Mob Vehicle model only. In your movement phase, when this model falls back, select one enemy unit, not Vehicle or Monster. And if they're within engagement range, roll a D6. On a 2 to 5, it's D3 Mortal Wounds. And on a 6, it's a straight 3 Mortal Wounds. Good way to possibly get some Mortal Wounds out there. I would say there's very few times that if you are going to be in combat, you want to probably leave it. But there might be occasions, there might be a stratagem I've missed that allows you to uh, fall back then recharge and this might be quite useful. But overall, so it's okay. Raised suspension, uh, speed mob vehicle model only. Models can make range attacks in engagement range but only on enemies not in engagement range. So think of that just like a massive weapon on top and they can just fire on top of it. Again, I don't think that's one of the best ones in my opinion. Uh, considering it has to be on a, uh, a custom job. So there might be some options in that one, but I, I need to see the combinations in that. Warlord trait, Speed King, while a friendly Speed Freaks unit, excluding character units, is within 6 inches of this Warlord. Models in that unit can reroll wound rolls of 1. Now, whenever I see reroll wound rolls, I'm always intrigued because there's very few ways in this game to augment your wound rolls, or at least in previous edition that was not the case it's it was harder to to reroll your wound rolls or augment them so i'm always intrigued but i do also know that orcs also don't get so many rerolls compared to like space wing captains they usually get plus one tip and i think with the war trek you don't get really any of that 
But this allows you sort of an R ability to get a reroll and of wounds, which is very, very interesting. So I would be very interested in that one. And in fact, it says, you know, it's not with close combat, it is all wounds. It means it could be unranged as well. Having, you know, your your war trike go up along with a lot of uh, boys, or, you know, not boys, uh, bikes and then other units could be interesting. Or you can maybe have someone sit in the back with, you know, big artillery units and fire. Don't know if that's really a speed freak way with your wagons, but always an option. Either way, I think it's actually quite a good trait. Stratagem, Blitz and Daka, one command point, using the shooting phase when a speed mob unit shoots until the end of the phase, reroll hit rolls of 1 from models in the unit. If they target a unit within 12 inches, custom booster blasters, reroll 1s and 2s. Uh, again, if you've got loads of Daka, then it is going to be very, very useful just to get that reroll 1s. It really just depends on what you're firing. Uh, on other forces, this may be more useful, considering Orcs don't have many accesses to rerolls as some other forces do. Then yeah, I can see the uses for it. Final stratagems for Speed Freaks is Charge, which is two command points. Almost disappointed didn't put more explanation marks as well. Uh, just personal opinion on that. Using the Charge Phase, when a War Biker unit makes Charge Move, add one to Strength of Attacks and minus one AP. Adding that extra AP is delicious, I always like to see that. Plus one strength is sometimes not useful. Minus one AP is almost always useful. You know, when it's like AP minus six, then it's usually not. No, there's many things that are AP minus six. But, you know, there'll be situations where you need to be that one strength higher and AP is always, weapon, is always uh, handy. So, yeah, that could be very, very good. Crashing through, which is one command point, using the charge phase when a speed freaks unit finishes a charge move. If unit has a spike ram, it cannot use that ability this turn. Select one enemy unit within one inch and roll a d6 for each model up to six. If the unit is a biker, each model, uh, each uh, each roll of four plus is a mortal wound. If the unit is a vehicle, excluding mega track scrap jet and custom booters, booster blasters, for each four plus the enemy suffers d3 mortal wounds. If the unit is a mega track scrap jet, custom booster blasters, for each two to five is d3 mortal wounds, and for each six is 2d3 mortal wounds. Whoa, that could be devastating. And I had to have a look at that one and go, is that right? Have I misread that in some way? I don't, I don't think I have. Because it is particularly brutal if you are taking a Megatrix Scrap Jet or a Custom Booster Blaster. Uh, but yeah, you know, potentially if you manage to get off that 6, it's going to do a wee bit of damage. I would just say, you know, really, really depends on that one. Yeah, it could be a good one to get a good few mortal wounds. It's one command point. Yeah, I think it's not too bad. More gets over here. One command point. Using the sh in the movement phase when speed mob unit from your army falls back. That unit can still shoot. If that unit is a boom a snaz wagon, that ranged attack scores uh, additional hit on our modified rolls of six as well. Uh, yeah, that one could be fine. You know, being able to fall back and still fire, it's going to have some uses depending on the units. Uh, I know some of the buggies are quite good, so one command point, cheap, cheap and just in case you need to get out and then start firing on other units, pretty good. Attack out the sun, two command points, use the end of the, end of the turn. Select a Defcot's unit from your army and remove from the battlefield. In reinforcement, step of next movement step, set up the unit more than nine inches away from enemy units. This is your standard, take away a unit and then it comes back next turn. Having that redeployment stuff is always very, very useful and probably really helpful to just find def cops a little bit more. They are fast, but they are expensive, etc. I just think that having this stratagem on top will be very useful just to redeploy and be a good wee harassing unit. Lots of squigs, one command point, using the shooting phase and select one rock trucker squig buggy unit from your army. Add one to the number of squig mines that unit has remaining. I don't really know this unit all too well, so I'm not going to judge it whether it's good or not, but I imagine having more mines is probably going to be quite useful for it. So yeah, not too bad. Lastly, here's a wee look at the looted vehicle section. I don't know if it's going to be easy to be able to read them, I tried to take as good a photo as possible. Really you're only going to see these in Crusade Force and probably our narrative games as well, which might annoy a few people. People really love to have looted vehicles four orcs so not having them is a bit of a disappointment but there are options for them and we can always customize stuff and count them as other things as well keep in mind if you want to use them as a wagon of some sort but yeah there are narrative reasons you might have these as well which is pretty cool i'm not going to cover them because they're not match play legal but you know we do love our looted stuff and i thought i'd at least post the pages so people could see 
And that is it from my thoughts when it comes to Warzone Octarius Critical Mass. Overall, I am not a fan of these books. I think I've said that over and over again, that they are just not the ideal way I would want to produce them. But I do want to give a bit more of a positive spin because this is more orc orientated. If you play narrative and you're playing orcs, then yeah, this book you might actually get quite a bit of good value of it. The Index Astra Cartographica, that should really be in one book with your Inquisitors, with your Assassins, basically the extra stuff you can add, add to Imperium Forces. One book, and it should be just them. Don't spread them out. Inquisitors have been on a book already. We've now had our Rogue Traders. Bay Assassins is coming next. But overall, yeah, I just wish when it came to the co the supplements, don't just favour one of the clans because sometimes I give them two good rules and two good options that they become a little bit favourit favouritism. I think if you're going to go down that route, give each of them just a small amount each, three warlord traits, three relics, you know, six stratagems, similar to what they did for Chaos Space Rains and Psychic Awakening. Each of the legions got a wee bit extra on top of them and I think it really did help the force just feel more like their actual legion. They were just really designed towards that legion to reward the playstyle that they favour. Favor. And I just think that, you know, if they just had all the clans, each of them got three pages each, what would that be, an extra 20 pages, take out some of the narrative, we would probably see a lot more value for the orc players. If some of them like to play goths, they'd have some extra stuff. If some like to play blood axes, they'd be here, evil sons, etc. And when it comes to Army Renown, I really like it. I think the Speed Freaks one does come out well. I see that Speed Freaks are doing well in general, so there's maybe a little bit of a danger they'll do too well now, now but uh, I don't know on that one. It'll really come down to what the tournament players do, and if they end up doing quite well with them, we'll just have to wait and see. So, thanks again for watching. Please comment, share, like and subscribe. Big thank you to Games Workshop for giving us an early copy of this, so we can give you an honest review of what we think of it. Uh, and we'll see you on an R Tabletop Salt Battle Reports.